Okay. So we have an interesting question here. The employee was dismissed in 2020. Okay, pandemic. 2020, two years ago. Okay. And uh, they, he or she is asking whether it's still okay to file a labor law, a labor law, a labor case or a labor complaint. Okay. Um, before I answer that question, I've said several times in this, uh, in, in many videos, I'm not here to promote. I'm not here to encourage. I'm not here to, um, I have to say this, um, tell people to file labor law, a labor complaints or labor cases, okay? It's not my intention. My intention here is for education um, because there are so many people who join the workforce, particularly those who are fresh from college, and even those who are already in the workforce for 5, 10, or even 15 years. There are so many people who do not have any basic understanding of labor law. Okay. Can you just imagine your work will probably consume like 70% of your life, 30% was education from kindergarten, preparatory, elementary, high school, college. Like uh, that's your first 20 years of your life. The remaining 80, 70, if you're lucky, or 60 years of your life is work. And then you have no idea about labor law. I've met uh, people who have already retired. I've met people who are already in their 60s, 50s already. And even they themselves do not, do not have any basic knowledge of labor law. So that is why we have, uh, I've been doing this uh, advocacy. It's more for education, okay? It's more for literacy for the general public. I'm not here to promote uh, filing of labor cases, okay? Um, how to say this? Um, it's always best that uh, issues, complaints uh, that are employment related be resolved peacefully and amicably. Nobody really wins in the labor case. Both the employer and the employee will be paying costs and expenses for legal fees, for filing fees, for appeal fees, and whatever fees. Then usually, um, it's a very long process towards finality of the decision, which could last for 10 to 15 years. I mean, sometimes it only reaches up to seven years, but there are those cases that reach up to 15 to 20 years. You never know if that will be your case. So there. Now to having said that, to go to, to go directly respond to the question, it has to do with the prescription for uh, labor law cases, by the way. She did not or he did, or she did not really specifically state what kind of case she's going to file. So there are two kinds of prescription or limitation towards filing a labor case. The first one is the illegal dismissal case. If you're going to file an illegal dismissal case, you only have four years to file it. Otherwise, you are no longer allowed to file it. Forever hold your peace. Okay. That's what they say in weddings. You have four years to file it or forever hold your peace. As in P-E-A-C-E, -E, peace, peace sign. So that is counted from the day that you were told that you're no longer employed. Um, count there. Uh, that will be your 
reckoning date and then count four anniversaries or four years to that date. That's only your time to file it. Number two, uh, labor cases involving monetary claims. So if you're just going to ask for to be paid your holiday pay, premium pay, unpaid salary, and, and differentials and the like, if it's only about monetary claims, you only have three years. Three years. However, this is the problem. The counting of three years is not based on your last day of work. Generally, it is. Let me just be clear. However, it is possible that it is not because three years under the labor under labor law is interpreted as or understood as three years from the date the cost of action accrues. Okay, cost of action accrues. That's a very technical legal phrase. Let me illustrate. <clears throat> the, the best case I could think of, of was this seafarer there's this case involving a seafarer he worked with the manning agency um, for like 30 years because it involved his monetary claims for 1976 77 78 something like that okay um there were years 19 in the 1970s we're in he had differentials or unpaid amounts in his contract, okay? And then he kept following up with HR. And then HR kept telling him that uh, they're still processing it. Okay, the usual response, the usual standard response that uh, we're still processing it, approved by boss, all that, all that uh, uh, usual response. There's a definite response. So sometime in 1991, 1990. So, so the next timeline is 1990s. So 70s, 1990s. So you can just imagine it's a 30-year period. Okay. Um, he finally left or exited the company. And then uh, before exiting the company, he, he again... Uh, ask for those differentials and then the same response to him. So imagine 30 years being told na process pa. Ang weird na nun. Very weird. <laughs> okay, so he finally exited the company and then days after he sent a demand letter for the, for the differentials. Okay, so uh, how to say this, um, that became the labor case, the issue. So in the, in the case, the employer's defense was that the three-year prescription has already applied or it's already, has already, uh, it already, it already made the complainant's claim prescribed. Okay, so what na? expired na defense the employer and then the employee said that how can you say that how can you claim that the three year uh, prescription will apply when you've been telling me na it's still processing walang ganyanan boss basically um, so that became the issue and when it reached the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court said that this is, this is the perfect way to explain when the cost of auction accrues. Okay? The Supreme Court said that the counting of the three years should not be made based on when the amount should have been given. Like, for example, if we're talking about 13-month pay and the employee was not paid 13-month pay 1976, Plus three, 1979, touch move na. Hindi ganyan. That's not how you count. Okay? The Supreme Court said that a three-year counting should be based on when the cost of action accrues. 
dyan na pumapasok yung term na yan. When the cause of action accrues, kung kailan nagkaroon ng legal right si employee magdemanda. What's the word? Tag-along way of saying it. When did the employee acquire the right to demand? And that's where the Supreme Court said, said that the cause of action, so the right to, to file a case, happened after the employee finally made a final demand via the demand letter and then the employer refused to pay. So the, the counting of the cause of action is based on the denial or the refusal of the employer to pay. Kasi before, for the last 30 years, di naman din deny the employer. What did the employer do? Dribble, dribble. Fal, uh, processing, na follow up here and there, pinapaproof kay boss, inahanap yung perma, etc. etc. So dribble, dribble, 30 years of dribble, dribble. So the employer was not denying or refusing to pay during that time. So at that time, the employee did not have any right because wala pa namang, his rights were not yet being violated. That's the point. So when the, the employee sent out a demand letter and the employer refused to pay, dun pa lang na, na violate yung right the employee. And when the employee's rights were violated, that's when the cause of action accrued. Yan yung concept ng cause of action. Accrues. Okay? So the Supreme Court said, so tama as employee. The cause of action for purpose of, of counting the three years was when the employer refused to pay. It was when the employee, employer refused to pay the monetary claims in 1991. That's when the three-year counting started. Okay, so remember that. So to go back to the original question, it depends on what your case is. If it's about illegal dismissal, you still have four years, so two years pa lang. So you still have time. If it's about a monetary claim, no, you just have one year left. So, oh no, that's just when you're left. Depends again on when the cause of action accrued. So it depends on what you're claiming. And then what are the circumstances? What are the situation? Baka paras lang yung case mo na you've been told to follow up. Of course, you have to send a definitive demand. Kaya nga, there's demand letter to make that loud and clear that you're demanding it already. And then if it's refused, denied, that's, a, that's a, when the counting starts. So I would suggest to consult with a competent lawyer to thoroughly analyze your issue or problem. Uh, I'm just giving here the basic rules and principles on it. Okay, so there. If you find this educational and informative, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, um, if you want to learn more, feel free to join our membership at the Board of Page and explore our courses and masterclass.